Six ways being retired has helped me be a better citizen. Number one, time. I have more time now than I did when I was working. When I was working, it seemed like I was always hustling and bustling. And so anything that didn't deal with time or any of my immediate responsibilities, I had to rely on what I heard from others. And those others can be my friends. Those others can be the news. Those others can be talk show hosts on the way to work. But a lot of times what I found is most people and most outlets are editorializing the information that we get. And there are cases where I don't necessarily agree with the editorialization of how we've gotten to a place. When I was in elementary school, my math teachers would always say, um, check your work and show the work. And sometimes it's not where you end up, it's how you get there. Being retired has really given me the time to focus on the long math for how I get to certain positions and really do the research and understand why I believe what it is that I believe and why I think what's right is right. Number two, I have increased patience when I'm in the conversations. I just have way more patience when I'm in conversations with other people. One of the ways that I like to understand things and build context is by having conversations with others, just like we're having conversations here. It's not that we all necessarily have to agree, but a lot of times in those conversations, we learn something that maybe we didn't know or there's something additional that comes up for us to research. When I was working, I didn't necessarily have the patience to do that because I already had so many other things on my mind. I had so many other things happening at any given time that I had a really short fuse when it came to opinions or positions that didn't seem to make sense to me and I would get from A to Z really quickly. But now that I have more bandwidth, now that I have more time, I'm able to have some of those conversations a little more deeply and really not just understand that I'm in a different place than an individual, but really try to understand where we split. Because what I start to find when I get into these conversations is that we all have the same basic needs and we really all are looking for the same thing. We want to make sure that we can take care of ourselves and our family and have a, a fairly moderate to high level of safety. That's it. That's what it all comes down to. But how we get there, different people have different opinions. And there's reasons for that, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But it takes patience to be able to nail down the conversation to even get to that point. And so by being retired, I've been able to develop that patience because I don't have all of the other things that are weighing in on my thought process. Number three, I've reached a point in my life where I have have enough life experience to help me determine what my thought process should be on a particular issue. Uh, a lot of things don't uh, impact me directly but they impact the broader world. And if they impact the broader world around me, then by default, they're going to impact me in one way or another. I, I think one of the big issues that I think exemplifies this is, and again, this is not to be political, it's just to make a point, is I was, I've been trying to figure out why older people are so emotive about the abortion issue. And I get it that it's taking away women's rights. And I get that it's the reproductive health. But what I didn't realize and I didn't think about is that the people that are in their 70s and 80s are the people that were part of the original fight. And so everything that people are seeing now relative to the abortion conversation, that was a conversation that they were fighting 50 years ago when they were in their 20s and 30s and teens. And so for them, it's bringing back the past and putting them in a place that they don't want to go back to. And I bring that up because what that shows is that it's hard sometimes to understand how a person's life experience is going to intervene in a decision or be impacted by an issue so instead of trying to diminish other people's thoughts, 
we should try to understand how their life experience might intervene because what that does is helps us understand who that individual is and where they're coming from. And I think when a person is looking at my positions and my thoughts on things, I would tell you that my life experience absolutely comes into it. And I've been fortunate enough to have a broad, diverse set of experiences that I think for a lot of issues bring a different spin to it. So we may agree, but our life experiences take us there in a different way. As we start to understand our commonalities and putting together the things that that make us similar, the better off we're going to be as a country. And to be able to be part of that process based on being able to articulate my own uh, life experiences in a meaningful way is something that I think makes me a better citizen. And I think the more we can build common ground with other Americans, the better off we're all going to be. And in the long term, that's where we all need to get to because the current state now of us demonizing each other and dividing each other and being divisive with other isn't going to last long term and is going to ultimately create to the breakdown of this thing called America. Number four, I have the capacity now to really research different candidate positions and understand what are the policy positions of a different candidate, and not just at the presidential level, but at the Senate level, at the House of Representatives level, at the local level, at the at whatever the issue is that candidates are talking about. What have they done? What is their voting record? What are the things they have shown are important to them? I have time now to research those things and really spend the time to understand, here's why I'm voting the way that I'm voting. Here's where I am and here's why I'm there. And I don't think it's fair of any of us to have or expect a candidate to have perfect positions on everything as it relates to us. Because the geographies that any politician are going to be responsible for are broad and they take in a broad electorate. Even down the city council where you're dealing with some municipalities that have millions of people in them. And so the more that a person's underlying values or the reasons they get to a place sometimes are going to be more important than the actual policy position themselves. And so with this additional capacity, I've had the opportunity to really do some research and understand the underpinnings and what really makes a person tick as it relates to their political positions. And I don't think I would have had the time to do that when I was working because there's a lot of information. Um, I was just looking at a sample ballot and I saw some of the legislation and the laws themselves are incredibly detailed and they're, they're hard to understand and are not really made for a layperson. And even with what's in the sample ballot, there, there's other pieces. And so it's hard sometimes to understand why a politician may feel a certain way about a certain issue. But I think the thing that it comes down to is what's the end, what's driving the pursuit of a particular end. And that a lot of times is going to give you the answers. And so when you have the capacity to understand that, then you start to be able to make decisions that you feel better about. Number five, less stress impacting how I internalize issues. A lot of what I was trying to figure out when I was working and looking at the issues was based on my emotional response to whatever the issue was. I would get frustrated, but I don't know that I would be frustrated as much with the issue as opposed to what's going on in my life at that moment. I would be focused on here is what's happening to me right now. Here's what I'm focusing on right now. Here's how I feel about it. And if you catch me on any given day, I may feel differently about this thing because my emotions were there. And so now, without all of that stress, I really find myself in this place where I could sit back and really just think about it. And 
say, what is the nature of this issue? What is it really trying to solve? What are some of the unintended consequences of this legislation? And how is it going to impact me? How is it going to impact my taxes? How is it going to impact my life on a day-to-day basis? But on top of that, how is it going to impact the rest of the world around me? A lot of times when we're under stress, we're not thinking about the world around us. We're thinking about ourselves. With less stress, I think I make better decisions and I internalize my decision making a little bit better because I'm making them not based on emotion, but based on a clear headed perspective. Number six, I have more bandwidth to devote the appropriate emotional resources to make decisions that I think are best for the country. I vote not just for myself, but I vote based on what I think is best for the country. I know there are people in this country who disagree with me politically on certain political issues or on certain candidates. And that's okay because when I look at them eyeball to eyeball, it's not about me being right and them being wrong. It's me being confident that I'm making the decision that's best for the country. And I think that is more difficult when you have a lot of things on your mind and you don't have the emotional resources because once you get angry, then you're, you get emotionally hijacked and you're angry and you just don't like it. And I'm able to not do that. When you look at a lot of issues, a lot of issues, folks on both sides of the aisle will agree that there needs to be a solution. But the challenge sometimes becomes that people will dig their heels in on a political basis on what their solution is and not want to switch. And so the, con- the relative constituencies then dig their heels in and draw impressions and judgments about the other way that a person wants to get to the same issue. So then by the time it comes up for a vote or when legislation is being written, it's not even about what the legislation is about. It's about the fact that I'm right and you're wrong. And so in that type of situation, you're never going to solve problems. But, And that's because when you get caught into the, when you don't have the emotional resources to, to really deal or to bandwidth to deal with it, you're looking for the quick solution. The quick solution is always going to be a lot more black and white. And I think the more that we can step back, take a breather, or as I like to say, sleep on it and talk about the issues, the better off we're going to be as a country. And I believe I've been able to do that as a uh, as I've moved through this era of retirement. So, uh, but I do want to share with you one conversation that I had that I thought was pretty interesting because I know that some of you out there are going to be looking at this thinking, this person leans this way, this person leans that way. It's, but this has nothing to do with partisan politics. I had a conversation about a week ago with somebody who has the same political leanings that I do. But it was interesting because as I was talking to him, I realized that he didn't really have a handle on why he was voting the way that he's voting. And so as I talked to him, I started to explain to him, here's what this person's positions are. Here's how these positions were founded. Here's where, here are the values, the underlying values that are taking the person down this path, so on, so forth, and et cetera. And so what that does is that empowers him, not just to say, I'm going to vote this way because I think it's right because I've always voted this way, but it empowers him with the information to really be able to stand up and defend his positions. Because the thing I get concerned about is that people will make a decision based on something artificial, like a political party or their historical preference. And then when they're pushed on it, they'll switch. And there's nothing wrong with changing positions. But I think there's something wrong when you don't have the information to make a decision that you can stand behind because things of this magnitude are too important for us to do that. But I wouldn't have been able to have that conversation if I was still working because as I was going through that conversation, I found it incredibly frustrating because it was very, very clear to me that this individual had not 
taken the time to truly understand the issues. But I also was able to understand that the reason that this person hasn't taken the time to understand the issues is because when you're still working, you don't have the time to do that. And so you have to focus on how different pieces of information are editorialized. And depending on who gets you first, that's the impression that you're going to believe. So um, so that's that's about all that I had. I, I do want to implore everybody to vote. Uh, I think we're in a consequential election. Uh, I tend not to be as uh, alarmist as a lot of people are, although I'm incredibly concerned that the outcome of the election either way can create some 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 issues, but I think we have to get past this election in order to heal so we can start talking to each other again and, and becoming one country against the rest of the world as opposed to one country and one region of the world against another region of the world. Um, but just to recap, the six items are, number one, uh, having the time to study and understand the issues. Uh, number two, uh, I have increased patience when discussing g- discussing and exploring issues. Uh, number three, uh, having the life experience to, to really provide a rich context. Uh, number four, uh, capacity to research candidate positions. Uh, number five, uh, less stress impacting how I internalize uh, the impact of different pieces of legislation and key issues. And number six, uh, more bandwidth to devote the appropriate emotional resources to make decisions that are the best for the country. So, again, I encourage you all to vote. Please take a moment to share this with anybody you think might be like-minded with you that is looking for information on early retirement or just perspective in general. And if there's any questions that any of you have or any items that you would like to have covered, Leave them in the comments. I respond to every comment and I often will write content based on my research around what some of the questions that you have because I've always said that uh, if you're important enough to me to a- if you're important enough to me to answer the question, it's always going to be the truth and I'm always going to give you the truth. And also feel free to subscribe to the channel. I would ask that you subscribe to the channel because that lets me know that this information is working for you as we continue to build the community. So on that note, have a good rest of your day. Make sure you get out and vote if you're watching this before November 5th, 2024. And I will talk to you soon.